What's going on baseball fans? How you doing? So in today's video, I wanted to go over a pitcher that you may not have heard too much about as of right now, and that's Tomoyuki Sagano from Japan. He was just posted in the last few days. So in this video today, I wanted to go over what is he all about? What does he bring to the table? So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. When it comes to the free agent market this year for starting pitching, you think of guys like Trevor Bauer, Jake Odorizzi, Masahiro Tanaka, James Paxton, and others. However, what if I told you that there's a name out there that could also be a really good investment, but no one is really talking about him? That one guy to keep an eye on is Tomoyuki Sagano out of Japan. He's the next pitcher out of Japan that is drawing a lot of buzz like Kenta Maeda, Masahiro Tanaka, Yu Darvish, Hiroki Kuroda, and Daisuke Mata. Matsuzaka. There's a lot of reasons why he's drawing a lot of buzz. So let's take a dive into why teams should be interested in his services. Let's start off by breaking down exactly what you're going to see from Tomoyuki Sagano. First and foremost, he's not going to blow guys away as he'll sit in the lower 90s most of the time, but he can ramp it up to the mid 90s. He has two different types of fastballs, one being a four seamer and the other being more of a two seamer with both sitting in the low 90s for the most part. He'll mix in a very solid slider that sits in the mid 80s along with a decent curveball that'll sit around 78 to 80 miles an hour. In Sagano's career in Japan over eight seasons, he had a record of 101 and 50 with an ERA of 2.35 and a strikeout per nine rate of 8.0. This also included three seasons in which he had an ERA below two. What has made Sagano so successful though is his pinpoint control. This has been shown by a very low 1.8 walks per nine rate in his career. He has dealt with a couple of injuries in the last two seasons with his back and his hip, but overall he has had a very good career in Japan. And based on reports, he looks to be ready to go for 2021. So you might be wondering, what can we expect from a Tomoyuki Sagano in the major leagues? So let's take a look at his stats in Japan compared to some of the more successful pictures that also came out of Japan. As I mentioned earlier, Sagano had a very good career in Japan, including a record of 101 and 50 or a win percentage of 669, an ERA of 2.35, a strikeouts per nine rate of 8.0 and a walks per nine rate of 1.8. Let's take a look at the most recent pitcher to have success in the majors, Kenta Maeda, who also pitched eight seasons in Japan. He had a record of 97 and 67, or a win percentage of 595, an ERA of 2.39, a strikeouts per nine rate of 7.4, and a walks per nine rate of 1.9. As we can see, these numbers are very similar with Sagano's. The only difference is Maeda was about 27 years old when he signed with the Dodgers, whereas Sagano will be 31 when he signs. How about Masahiro Tanaka, one of the best Japanese pitchers of all time? In seven seasons, he posted a record of 99 and 35, which was a win percentage of 739, along with an ERA of 2.50, a strikeouts per nine rate of 8.5, and a walks per nine rate of 1.8. Again, similar numbers minus the win percentage, but the ERA, strikeouts per nine, and walks per nine are similar. The main difference between the two though is again the age, as Tanaka was 26 years old when he signed with the Yankees. Let's check out Yu Darvish, one of the most decorated pictures of all time out of Japan. Like Tanaka, he was also 26 years old when he came to the majors, and in Japan, he had a record of 93 and 38, which was a win percentage of 710, along with a strikeouts per nine rate of 8.9, and a walks per nine rate of 3.2. Darvish definitely had the better win percentage, a much better strikeouts per nine rate, and simply just had more of a pitcher's build considering his height of 6'5", whereas Sagano is only 6'1". But where Sagano showed better success was limiting the walks as he had a much better walks per nine rate than Darvish did. 
How about Hiroki Kuroda, who had a short but solid career in the majors between the Dodgers and the Yankees. In 11 seasons in Japan before signing with the Dodgers in 2008, he posted a record of 103 and 89, which equaled out to about a 536 win percentage with an ERA of 4.10, a strikeouts per nine rate of 6.5, and a walks per nine rate of 2.7. Sagano actually posted better numbers than Kuroda did in Japan prior to coming to the majors, and Kuroda was actually a couple of years older when he signed with the Dodgers than Sagano is now. And we can't go any further without bringing up another extremely polished Japanese pitcher, and that one I'm very familiar with, Daisuke Matsuzaka. In eight prior seasons in Japan prior to signing with the Red Sox, he had a record of 108 and 60, or a 642 win percentage, a 2.95 ERA, a strikeouts per nine rate of 8.7, and a walks per nine rate of 3.3. .3. Overall, when I look at all of these stats, I think realistically, Sagano has a good chance of being a combo of a Kenta Maeda and a Hiroki Kuroda. Sagano has a similar build to both of these guys, considering they're all six foot one. He has similar stuff to Maeda and actually had better stats than Kuroda did in Japan, but he's similar in age to Kuroda. I think Sagano has the potential to be a mid-rotation guy with the floor of a back-end starter. What teams could be interested in someone like Sagano? Really, any team should be interested because he's probably not going to cost too much, as he'll probably get a two to three year deal at around 10 to 12 million per year. Whoever signs him will have to pay a posting fee to his former team, the Yomiri Giants, which will be 20% of the first $25 million he makes, 17.5% of the second $25 million he makes, and 15% of anything after that. Realistically, he'll probably get a two to three year contract of anywhere from 24 to 40 million. Million, so expect the team to pay anywhere from five to ten million dollars in posting fees. Overall though, for teams that are looking to jump back into contention in 2021 that could use some more starting pitching, could see Sagano being a good risk. Right away, my Red Sox seem like a good option, mainly because their starting pitching last season was an absolute dumpster fire. He won't break the bank, which you know Heim Bloom loves. You could see a team like the Yankees go after him if they don't bring Tanaka back. Maybe another team in the AL East, the Toronto Blue Jays, who could use some more starting pitching and traditionally tend to pay guys around what Sagano should be getting. Maybe some teams on the West Coast like the Angels, who definitely could use some more starting pitching, or the Padres, who could use some more depth due to Mike Clevenger missing this upcoming season due to Tommy John. Wherever it is, the market for Sagano should be busy, and if he can stay healthy, that could be a pretty good investment. So those are my thoughts on Tomoyuki Sagano. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. But that's all I got for this video today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. And I'll talk to you next time.